Would you please join me in welcoming to the stage Tan Shri Dr. Zeti Akhtar Aziz. First of all, welcome to this year's leader, Leadership Energy Summit organized by our Leadership and Governance Center. And the focus on leadership energy reflects its importance, as it's been highlighted in today's leadership. The contemporary environment that we are living in has become increasingly more challenging. It's characterized now by highly destabilizing and tumultuous events. Not only are we living in a world that has been, become highly unpredictable and unstable, but in a world that is frequently being subject to extreme conditions and all of us are tested to the limit. How do we survive then against the odds manifested in this environment? It is all about the ability to endure and prevail. It's all about being able to succeed and thrive in such an environment. It is all about becoming resilient. I've always talked about a resilient economy and a resilient financial system, but it's all about being resilient, yourself being resilient. Resilience is a key to surviving in this environment. Well, as you know, of course, Rajiv has got us to a great start in telling us about what it leadership means and leadership energy, its sources. Of. And today we are going to be privileged to hear and be inspired from the experience of personalities who have not only survived against such great odds, but who have also succeeded immensely. Let me take out this opportunity to express our gratitude to our distinguished speakers that have come from different parts of the world to share their knowledge and experience on this subject. It is all about their perseverance and resilience and how they have defied all expectations. And the issue before us is the source of their energy to persevere and their courage to stay the course when it appears to be immensely hopeless. In the business of central banking, we are increasingly being confronted by these extreme conditions and such resilience is therefore key. I have described central banking, the business that I have been in for 35 years, as being an unfinished business. It's an unfinished business because there are always new challenges on the horizon, endless demands emerging from an ever-changing and more complex environment, and great expectations that central bankers will provide all the solutions and take the necessary action to resolve the financial and economic problems that confront us. The central bank is also at the forefront in the management of financial and economic crises, a phenomenon that has plagued the world with increasing frequency. And we all know that such crises affects everyone in the country and all businesses. The central bank can also be described as a high impact organization. Its decisions or indecisions, its action or inaction will have major and far reaching implications and consequences on the economic well being of the public at large and the entire spectrum of businesses. The responsibility and accountability is therefore immense. It is all about bringing value and benefits to the citizens, and it's all about making the difference, the difference that Rajiv talked about. 
in an environment of greater transparency and enhanced communication, there's greater awareness of the prevailing circumstances. This has produced higher expectations for the delivery of results. Energy is therefore derived from this sense of purpose and meaning of what it is of what is of great value to you. Fiercely knowing this responsibility and accountability is the very source of the drive and intense energy to succeed. Knowing the high costs that destabilizing developments can have on the people and to businesses and the potential damage to the nation is a major prompt of the perseverance to press on, to survive, and to succeed. Despite extreme conditions and in the face of the threat of being thrown off balance, confronting the realities and the need to produce a solution when it seems very hopeless, provide the courage to stay the course. Knowing also that the stakes are high and knowing that sometimes you are the pillar of hope that spurs, this spurs the unwavering determination. From my experience as a lifelong career central banker, such extreme conditions that test us have become increasingly frequent. No longer are we in stable conditions where we can predict by projections, looking at the past and projecting into the future. While there have been many successes that have been achieved, there have also been those moments that have been most trying and devastating. During such times, developments set you back to a much worse situation than your original position. Those times have arisen from external shocks that are beyond your control. Sometimes it's also from ambitious agendas that you want to achieve to create the difference, to make the difference for a better future. And uh, sometimes you have vol violent resistance and sometimes you have domestic stress that are brought on by actions that are in conflict with the central bank's mandates or from political tensions. We've seen this time and again. The ability to endure, to persevere, to be resilient in the face of such extreme odds is about having a great sense of purpose of what needs to be achieved and the motivation, knowing what the motivation is of why it needs to be achieved. The sheer responsibility and awareness of the accountability that comes with it is the very driver of such perseverance. It, also, it is also the fear of failure and knowing the far-reaching and damaging consequences of such failure. This is reinforced with the values and discipline to stay the course. And this is truly important in central banking as well as in businesses. To do what is right and what is in the interests of the people. The discipline is important so that cent the central bank is consistent in its behavior, in managing the challenges and conditions, or even in the aspirations to push the frontier and to create greater value to the people and for the country. During such times, having clarity in the vision and on the objective of what is to be achieved becomes paramount. This has to be the starting point if it's to draw on the energies of the entire organization. Articulating it with great clarity throughout the organization allows the collective alignment to the goals. No longer are we working in silos, which was the case before. We had to change. This also avoids being diverted. Having that clarity, it avoids being diverted by distractions and what we refer 
to as noise when indeed we are confronted with unstable and destabilizing times. We are pulled in different directions. It is also imperative that when we are ambitious with bringing, out, bringing about change and transformation, knowing clearly the outcomes and the benefits it brings increases the potential for bringing diverse groups within the country and across countries towards achieving this common goal. And this is what I found immensely important to recognize when we are dealing with a region where we want to become more cohesive or amongst emerging economies or amongst different regions where we have an agenda to promote. Because of diverse backgrounds and diverse thinking and diverse uh, agendas or objectives, uh, this has becomes very, very challenging. There's one aspect that Rajiv hasn't mentioned, but I would like to mention because I think it has an important role, and that is about being paranoid. It's about being paranoid that the worst can happen. This is sometimes referred to as productive paranoia. I always knew it from the beginning, and my staff always thought that, um, that it was uh, um, being paranoid. But I do believe that as we enter into uh, an environment where we do more and more risk management, what is risk management is about? It is about assuming that the worst can happen and you want to prepare yourself for it. So central bankers need to excel as risk managers, knowing what could go wrong and preparing for the worst that may be, uh, that is yet to come. It involves building the buffers to prepare for the unexpected events before they happen. When I'm asked a question, for example, about how are we going to manage the liftoff, and for those of you who are not economists or financial experts, they are referring to the Federal Reserve Bank and when it will lift off from being maintaining interest rates at the zero, near zero level um, after seven years of maintaining it at that level. And this is called the normalization of interest rates. And my response is, it is not what we will do now, but what we have done before it happens that will see us through this period. It is not only the buffers that we have built, but the capability that has been developed to allow us to better intermediate and absorb such a shock and to allow us to withstand the volatile financial flows that are already occurring in anticipation of this eventuality. Sometimes there's also what is called black swan events. And as we all know, black swans are very rare. So this is something that really happens and these are defined as those developments that have a low probability of happening and a development that is very difficult to predict and anticipate. Like the liftoff, we all know that that's an eventuality that's going to happen and therefore we prepare for it. But in this particular case, sometimes something happens suddenly that is very uh, unexpected Therefore, being paranoid and building the resilience against such shocks will contain its damaging effects. Therefore, continuous rigor needs to be applied at all the time, during the good times and during the challenging times. Vigilance, detecting developments that could signal danger, early recognition of risks, are all important, also knowing how your risk profile changes will avoid being taken by surprise. 
central banking is also not for the faint heart. It is not only demands the high level of energy, not just the physical energy, but all the other energies that Rajiv talked about, but the emotional, spiritual, and I have it here, and the mind. When tested to the limit, it's from these sources of energy that the strength is derived. Investing in these sources of energy will avoid its depletion. Energy should not be taken for granted. Then there's also courage. It's derived from your convictions and values that you uphold, reinforced by your sense of purpose and what motivates you. Finally, I, I want to re-mention something that I mentioned a year ago at the 2014 summit. I spoke of the ability to generate and ride on the positive cycle of leadership energy. In mobilizing energies in an organization to be aligned to achieving an outcome, it also generates second round of energy bursts from others in the organization. And the continuous positive energy loop provides continuous motivation and momentum that can drive the organization. It is mutually reinforcing phenomenon that I have experienced in the bank time and again. Like when, you are, when your staff are demoralized and your team is demoralized, you drive the, the, the strength and the uh, aspirations but when you are down, the organization feeds the, the, the um, energy levels for you as well. And I do believe that this is an important phenomenon in an organization, that you are not alone. Let me conclude my remarks. The demand for, on leadership is immense. And in the current international and domestic environment, it requires tremendous leadership energy, that energy that is also sustainable. This leadership energy summit, we will, in this leadership energy summit, we will hear from the experience of successful individuals on the source of their energy in generating the outcomes and results that have made a difference. We will also learn about other sources of energy from which we can tap on and strengthen. This is the challenge of the new generation of leaders if they will truly be able to make lasting and meaningful changes in our environment. On this note, let me wish you a highly energized summit. Thank you.